Okay, we have uh, Brenda Penny, Shana White, and Lisa Wright uh, going left to right there, ladies and gentlemen. And since I read off the names that way, we'll, we'll start in that fashion as well. This is uh, three minutes uh, introductory statement. Brenda? So, uh, as you all know, I'm Forenza Pini, and I have spent the last 12 years fighting for our rights and freedoms. Our right to liberty and the pursuit of happiness is constantly being threatened by officials who believe that the people are not capable of governing their own lives. This needs to change and it needs to start at our elections. Making sure that our elections are honest is the first step to ensuring our liberty. The second step is to involve the public in every aspect of the electoral process. From voting, to observing elections, to running for office, the people must participate and as our elections officer it will be my mission to make sure all these activities are easy to do and that more people participate in running our county and our country. Our assessments are too high and are in fact abnormal with a backlog of appeals caused by misassessments. Our poor citizens are suffering because of this incorrect application of tax laws and are unable to find relief from the current assessor's office. Please join me in getting Trinity County back its prosperity by voting for me so that we can live our lives knowing that there are people who will fight for us and that we can fight for ourselves. Thank you so much for having to me, having me tonight and I look forward to your questions. Shanna? Hi, I'm Shanna White. I'm your current clerk recorder assessor. I'd like to thank Serafimus and Judge Letton and all of you for coming out tonight um, out of your busy lives to meet your candidates before casting your vote. A little bit about me. I moved to Trinity County in 1982. I married my husband, Greg, 30 years ago, and we're successful business owners of white construction and roofing. We're the proud parents of two daughters who were born and raised in Trinity County. So my career began in Trinity County 23 years ago as an account clerk in the Auditor Controller's Office. Through hard work and dedication, I am now your County Clerk Reporter Assessor. I currently hold my certified tax appraiser certificate and I'm three courses away from my advanced certificate. I also hold a certificate in Recordable Document Examiner and have completed courses towards a California Professional Elections Administration credential. I continue to attend annual trainings um, to keep me up on various law changes and procedures. Uh, since my appointment, I've done everything possible <clears throat> to protect the confidentiality of voters' information and have run elections honestly and fairly and followed all election codes. I've increased office hours open to the public. I've implemented the ability to examine official records electronically. With the assistance of the treasurer tax collector, we can also now collect fees via credit card. I've dedicated the past 23 years to Trinity County, and most importantly, the last eight in this office. My experience has provided me the knowledge and understanding that ensures these departments run efficiently and with integrity. Although I may not be the best public speaker, I am the candidate with the most experience for this position. And I look forward to continue serving you and would appreciate your vote on June 5th. Thank you. Lisa Wright. Good evening. I'm Lisa Wright. Thank you to the Seroptimus, Judge Levin, for putting this event on. I'm here tonight to ask you to make the right choice this election. You've had nearly a decade of Board of Supervisor appointed clerk assessor reporters, I'm going to refer to as the CRA, except for a few months of elected officials. And I think that that may have contributed to some of the issues we're having now. Let's look at some of the facts. In 2016, the grand jury issued a report um, citing several violations of election code by the current appointed CRA. That's very concerning. Uh, I served on the grand jury in 2010, and they based their reports on facts. They're not rumors or vendettas like some people may have you believe. They take their job very seriously and spend nearly a year putting those facts together before they prevent, present them to the judge. Second, there was a 2015 Board of Equalization report during the office tenure of the now appointed uh, CRA that found 22 areas of significant problems in the assessment practices. I've been able to, unable to find any public reports on how these corrections are being made with these fact-based findings. All I hear are denials. So you might say, who's Lisa Wright? You haven't heard of me, you haven't seen me around. 
So let's take you back to the third grade with me to the library day when I was searching out every biography that I could find on the American presidency. Um, by the sixth grade, I thought I was going to be the next president. In high school, I was walking door to door on cold Midwestern election days, trying to get people out to vote. So I've been enthralled with democracy since I was a child. I went on to earn a bachelor's degree in political science and French, a master's degree in public administration, and I was selected as one of 200 to the presidential management program during the Reagan and into the Bush administrations, really with the goal of improving the efficiency and effectiveness of government. I served in the Department of Justice at the Executive Office for U.S. Trustees, where we rolled out a self-funded pilot program nationwide with investment authority. I also received training at that time in fraud investigation from the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center. But home and community really pulled me back to my roots. I later served as a controller at a college, an executive director of a chamber of commerce, and an executive director of an economic development corporation, where we focused on expanding the tax base instead of continuing to tap into our citizens' fixed incomes by raising assessments and taxes. I later went on to private sector success, spending over 15 years in the Oracle space helping clients understand. I've been in the workforce for over 30 years, but my heart remains in the community. I decided to step out, step up for you, because I feel you need a choice in this election and that you deserve better. I am committed to protecting your rights, like your right to free and fair elections, and your right to own private property. I'm running to serve as a fair, honest, transparent candidate who remembers how much blood has been shed and continues to be shed to make sure these rights are not taken. Thank you. Okay, combining several questions here, um, what would you do in that office in times of disasters like the Helena fire? And I'm going to combine that, just in case you don't have a direct answer to that. What, what could be done from your office for economic development in Trinity County? Sorry, I wasn't in the mic. Did you hear the question okay? Yes, thank you. Okay, so what would you do about disasters like the Helena fire? And certainly this has to be within the scope of uh, power in, in your office. Now let's just take that one by itself. We'll, 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 take, we'll separate them. So, starting with uh, Renzo. Okay. Um, well, uh, there are steps that you take when uh, there is a disaster uh, like Helena. And I personally toured the Helena fire and I saw just how much devastation there was. And you, there are um, disaster relief uh, forms that you can fill out that the uh, assessor's office can then uh, reassess your property so that it is much, much lower so you don't have to pay like what you were paying when you had a house there or you had your farm there. Um, there's a few other things to do, but um, not really enough time to really go into everything that you can do for people in disasters. So. Um, so something our office could do for the Helena fire is exactly what we did do. We immediately, as soon as we heard about the fire, we reached out and, and attended any meetings that there were for the community. We immediately reassessed property values to um, take off those values of the burned property. It's called a calamity. Um, so therefore, you can your, your property values are lessened until you rebuild. As soon as you rebuild, you, can, you obtain your Prop 13 base your values if you build something that's exactly the same. So that's what, what my office does if there's a, a disaster of that nature. Lisa? Thank you. I think both the candidates covered it very well. Um, as um, Mrs. White said, there was that disaster in Helena. And I know that the office was able to work closely with the tax collector. I think with the Board of Supervisors as well, you'd want to work very closely, look at all types of abatements that you can provide to reduce the taxes. It's probably going to take more than uh, a year or so because the loss is so significant for them to catch up. So I think you need to look at programs that can ease them back in as they're eased back into their life and their new homes. Thank you. Now, now we'll get to that economic development question. Um, is there anything you can do from the, uh, the Office of Clerk Reporter Assessor to uh, spur an economic development in the country and, and in the county, excuse me, and if so, uh, how would you do that? Forenza? Well, there's a few things you can do, but this, this office is not based upon economic development. It really isn't. It's, but you can 
reduce the rates that uh, people are being taxed for their property, which gives them a little more leeway to actually do something with their money. But this is a very, very small percentage that you can um, reduce. It's there. We're not, for the most part, um, overdoing that very much as it is. But you can bring it down to the bare minimum so that people have a little more leeway to do things with their own money. Sean? Um, this office doesn't have any contributions, in my opinion, for economic development. Lisa, do you agree? No, I don't agree. Um, having an economic development background, I served in that role for eight years in the community. And I think that it's important that this office really represent the people. And so I would want to, as your representative, go before the Board of Supervisors um, to advocate strong economic development programs and the expansion of that tax base. I don't think that the owner, owner's uh, taxes should all fall onto your backs. Many of you are on fixed incomes. I know my property assessment went up 30%. Uh, my income didn't go up 30% in that time. So there is definitely a way that I could be an advocate for you and can continue to speak out publicly for the need for economic development and that tax base expansion. Thank you. All right. Um, next question has to do with um, uh, confidentiality of voter information. Your comments on whether or not our present system in the county is adequate to ensure uh, confidentiality of voter information, and if not, what would you do uh, to correct any deficiencies? Um, Friends. Well, <coughs> honestly, there are not good enough. Um, the office does not have enough uh, training to the personnel in it to do everything as accurately as they could be. So they need better training, and that is one of uh, my goals if I'm elected, is to uh, retrain our office staff so that they have uh, better service, better uh, privacy uh, training, and uh, better customer service. Sean? Um, the confidentiality of voters has been one of my biggest fights as, as being the clerk recorder assessor. Uh, there, there are people who believe that your information and your voter record should be open to the public. There is no law that says it should be, and I will fight for that and make sure that your information is kept confidential. Um, as for the training of my staff, I have a very good staff in my office, all four of them. Uh, they're, they're trained and they do excellent customer service. Lisa? Um, the public confidentiality, the private, I guess, confidentiality of your vote is very important. Um, and that's really the only thing that's secret about an election, is when you cast your ballot. The rest of the process and the procedure should be open for public observation. And that's the issue that this um, office has had in the past, is the reluctance and the denial of public observation throughout that process. You have that right to ensure that free and fair elections are being conducted. It doesn't include the right to see who you voted for specifically. That's the secret part about voting. That's what needs to be protected and would continue to protect it uh, in my office. All right, thank you, ladies. And that does lead into the next one about public observation. Um, we're all aware that there have been some criticisms. We had a lot of, uh, and, and rebuttals to those criticisms. And we had a lot of questions on that subject. I'm not going to phrase any particular question, but just throw that subject out to you. Uh, on uh, public observation of the elections process. Um, Reza? Well, we need full access to public observers for our elections process. We do not have enough. Our, our elections observers in the last election were actually restricted to a window outside of the elections office and were not allowed to properly observe the electoral process. This needs to change, and it should change before I get in office. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's part of our laws to have um, observation, and they're not being properly followed. Sean? So the public observation, you do have the right to observe the process of an election, every single one of you do. You do not have the right to see voters' confidential information. Yes, your vote's cast is definitely confidential. Your address, your driver's license number, your phone number, that's all confidential information. There's certain requirements that allow you to see that. There are individuals in the public who, who want to see that. They want to stand over 
my staff's shoulder while all of these things are happening, and that will not happen. Um, we did last election do some remodeling, created a window, so there's a hallway. So if anybody who wants to observe the process is more than welcome to come watch the process. Lisa. So the grand jury findings were very specific, uh, and these are factual findings, that visual access on the canvas was hindered for observers. That's very critical here. Like we said, the only thing that's really private is your actual ballot. Otherwise, you have a right to view how these ballots are being processed. I, I've seen a video. I've seen it in action. And a window, a shade went up in the window right when observers were trying to view things. Things cannot happen that way. You need to be transparent in this office. You need to be honest. You need to be fair. You need to be kind to the public. Giving public observation to voters and citizens is critical. Thanks. Um, this office, like just about every other office that we're considering here tonight, had a lot of questions about um, the, the cannabis industry and whether or not candidates are connected with the cannabis industry or not. I realize that uh, we all probably have differing opinions as to whether or not that's relevant to a particular office. Um, certainly it is for some and um, perhaps less for others. But in any event, um, this, this office in particular had a focus on that. So what I'd like to do uh, though you've touched on your your background and um, and your view of your qualifications for the office, if you would explain the extent to which you have been involved in the cannabis industry, um, and uh, or, and explain also your your means of support for the last say ten years or so. I think you may have already covered that, but I've got a lot of questions in that area, and I feel like it's only fair that those questions be asked. Friends, though. Well, um, in the cannabis industry, very little. I've attended a lot of meetings having to do with the cannabis industry, but I am very little uh, to do with it. Um, my experience includes working for my family's four automotive shops, uh, doing the bookkeeping, accounts payable, and customer service since I was 12 years old. And I've been running our family ranch and mining ventures, and I'm a member of the oldest mining district in the United States. Um, I served as a member of the Trinity County Collaborative for two years to help make our communities fire safe, and I have dedicated my entire adult life to community service. Donna? As for the cannabis industry, I have no participation in the cannabis industry other than in my office assessing businesses that have the cannabis. I'm sorry, and I missed the rest of the question. Well, well, it's basically your means of support for the last 10 years. So you may have already covered that if you haven't. Uh, fill in means the of support in cannabis? No, just oh. in general for your, yeah. you and your family. Oh, so I have worked for the county for the past 23 years, and the last eight of them being in this office. Yeah, Lisa? Uh, thank you for that question. I know that has come up um, personally as well. So I do advocate for the cannabis industry. About a year ago, I started to get involved from an economic development perspective to make sure or to contribute, I guess, my knowledge to the Board of Supervisors because I think that it was very important that they execute on the state laws and the power that they've been granted. And I'm hoping we hear more about that from um, the Board of Supervisors. Um, in terms of my financial um, support over the last 10 years, um, as I mentioned, the last 15 years I've had a successful career in Oracle software sales and consulting sales. That's my primary area of uh, income. Um, within that, I ha also have a couple of my own businesses in the consulting area that I derive income from as well. Uh, Form 700s are filed by all the candidates where you can request through a public records acquisition to view in more detail what those investments might entail for any of us. Okay, thanks. And now, ladies, it's free time. Uh, again, you have up to three minutes to uh, elaborate on any of your uh, comments you've already made. Um, uh, respond to some of the comments made by other candidates or any other subject. Your choice. Lorenzo? I will make a great elections officer because I love the electoral process. I want voter registration to be at an all-time high during my tenure. 
People need to participate in the, elect in the electoral process because elections are the foundation of our republic and without whom there will be no liberty. Some of my goals are the registration of all high school, school students who, that are old enough to vote and I hope to have an additional cl optional class so that they can learn about the electoral process and their rights as voters. I want to reopen our polling places because closing nearly all the polling places has added to the disenfranchisement of voters. I intend to follow the law which mandates that every voter receive a voter card that shows their name, address, and party affiliation so each voter can be sure it is all correct. Another one of my goals is to train the personnel, both permanent and temporary, like poll and canvas workers, so they are professional and follow the law. I plan to restructure each department so that it will run smoothly and competently, with the goal being to provide excellent service. My experience is unique, as I have been politically active since I was 16 years old, and I lobbied extensively at the state capitol for ranchers and farmers, and know how to make appointments with the legislators, go to their office and explain issues and suggest solutions. That will enable me to be effective at representing our county when laws that affect our voting rights come up. I'm also the youngest member on the California Eagle Forum Board of Directors, and I was also elected to help lead their Election Integrity Committee. I have served as an Election Integrity Project Observer for two election cycles. I have been working diligently to fix our Elections Office, and I have found that the only way I can do this is from the inside as the Elections Officer. Thank you so much for your time tonight, and I enjoyed your questions. <laughs> Uh, once again, thank everybody for coming out tonight um, and getting to know the candidates and voting for the candidate you feel uh, will do the best job for you and your community. I would like to clarify a couple things that have been said tonight. Um, a backlog of appeals was said that we have in our office. That is untrue. There is one appeal currently in our office for last year. Um, there was a grand jury report last, last year. Um, and, and unlike what was said, it is all factual information. It is not factual information. Um, the, the members of the grand jury were part of the group that is, uh, some of the members of the grand jury are part of the group that have filed lawsuits that are holding up the Mountain Valley Joint Unified School District bond um, to clean up the, the issues that they have with their schools there. Um, I wrote a response to that grand jury report. The Board of Supervisors wrote a response to that grand jury report. So I would encourage everybody to look at all of those. Um, and if you have any questions for me, feel free to ask me because I'm an open book and I'll, I won't lie. Um, as for the BOE survey that was done, it was done in 2012. The Board of Equalization completed that in 2014. That survey was done for the five years prior to 2012. So that was in 2007. I started in the office in 2010. There were, there were uh, 20 or so recommendations. So with those recommendations, the Board of Equalization then does a sampling. So they came back into our office in 2015 under my leadership. They did a sampling of records. Um, their values were 90, our values were 98.9% of what their values were. So to go to say that my office is not functioning correctly, that we're doing things that are against the law, um, I just think are untrue. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it with, um, there's been many false allegations about myself, my office, and I'm, I'm hoping that tonight clarified some of those. If it didn't, please contact me because I'm an open book. Um, the past, past 23 years in Trinity County, most importantly the last eight, um, gave me the knowledge and experience that's essential for this position. So I look forward to continue serving you and would appreciate your vote on June 5th. Thank you. this evening about the function of the CRA and concerns about how these duties have been carried out. What this all comes back to is making the right choice. With this election, you now have the choice to stay with the questionable state of the appointed CRA, or you can choose to elect a new set of fresh, educated, committed eyes of oversight, responsibility, and accountability. Some of my goals for this office include examining all the processes and procedures for adherence to state and county code 
Reviewing customer service practices to ensure citizens' concerns are addressed in a professional and kind manner. Establishing public outreach and involvement programs to leverage volunteers wherever possible. Providing more information to citizens via the trinitycounty.org. Ensuring that the deficiencies found by the grand jury and the BOE are addressed immediately and reported on publicly. Examining the practice of raising assessed values up to 2% annually to better protect fixed income individuals. Analyzing the feasibility and public support for reopening polls in remote locations. I pledge to you to be an honest, fair, transparent office holder who will abide by the law and whose approach to the public will be kind and helpful. There are difficult issues you have to deal with at times, and you want to go to a government office where you're respected and treated fairly. You deserve an elected CRA who is committed to ensuring that your precious liberties are not denied, including the most important job in government, and that's of you, the citizen, and your right to vote. These liberties also include property rights and equitable taxation. The framers of the Constitution actually put property rights ahead of all of our other liberties in some of their writings. So I stand before you tonight offering you a choice. I ask you to make the right choice on June 5th and vote for Lisa Wright. Thank you. Okay, thank you candidates. Uh, we are going to take a short break at this point. I'm going to try to hold it down to 10 minutes and I ask the Sir Optimus to uh, serve as marshals to try to get everybody back in here. So, in